will shepherd them and lead them to the living fountains of water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. That's good news. May God add a blessing to his word. Wow, what a wonderful word, knowing what God has prepared for us. At this time, I'm going to ask our officers they make their way forth. And as our officers come forth, uh, and we here at Ebenezer, we believe in the scripture. Uh, God has loved us a cheerful giver. He asks us the purpose in our hearts. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. 2 Corinthians 9 and 7. We stand on God's word because he's been so good. Um, someone uh, sent me a message to remind me. Uh, this is one year anniversary for our 8 o'clock service. So we've been doing this. Know, yeah. and, and, and so, um, thank you for your support. Uh, we were, I'm just amazed at what God has done. So thank you for your support. Continue to tell your neighbors and loved ones. And it's been because of your giving. Uh, giving because of your support. Because of your love. And we thank you. Thank you for that. So at this time, I'm going to turn it in the hands of our officers. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. That's great. Father God, we thank you for allowing us to be here one more time. We thank you for giving us the strength to come out and serve you, Father. We ask you to please uh, strengthen us and uh, guide us as we uh, go through the whole service of today. We ask you, Father, to bless this offering and bless those who gave and those who had the purpose in their heart to give. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Uh, we rise and uh, Father, we go.
Oh
children to the poor and the man to sing with them. I commend our young people and the parents for bringing them out. Many of them were up 11, 12 o'clock last night doing their thing. But they submitted to their parents to get up this morning and press their way out to Ebenezer. And I don't take that for granted. Thank God to all our media staff, our musicians that are here, our urchers that are on the floor. Thank you so much for all that you do. As our kids are taking their seat, we ask you to grab those Bible devices or follow along with us. On 2 Peter chapter 1. I want you to focus in on that 16th verse. 2 Peter chapter 1. I want you to focus in on that 16th verse. Uh, we've been going through the Peters. We just finished the book of 1 Peter. And to go to the Lord to go ahead and finish all of the Peters today. So we'll be going into 2 Peter. And we'll continue through 2 Peter. Um, and um, just get the whole understanding of what Peter being led by the Holy Spirit uh, and speaking to our hearts uh, in our season, in our day, in our time. Uh, while you're looking for that, and your head's about, or uh, you're just focusing in, we ask you to go on a word prayer with me. Father, I thank you so much. Wow, thank you for using our young people, Lord. Uh, I was just touched uh, to the deep part of my soul just thinking about uh, these young voices and your ministering angels encamped all around us in heaven. Lord, we're going to be able to sing praises and harmonize our voices and praise the Lamb who was slain for us. Thank you for who you are. Now, Lord, I want to believe that everyone's saved here today, but just in case, do what you can only do. Would you help them to confess with their mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in their heart that, Father, you raised them from the dead and you said that they would be saved. Let them know it's by grace through faith and not of themselves. It's a gift from you. Now, Lord, we thank you that your Holy Spirit is already here. Holy Spirit, you know my issues, my hang-ups, my sins. I ask you to forgive me of my sins and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. Therefore, we ask you to teach. Would you guide us? Would you lead us into all truth? We just thank you for your presence here today. Would you be in my eyes and my seeing, my mouth and my speaking, my heart and my understanding? Thank you for your anointing. Speak deeply into our spirits today that we may get exactly what we need to run this race for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Second Peter chapter 1, uh, 16 verse, For we did not follow cunningly devised fables when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. I'm going to speak from a subject this morning. There is power in the blood. There is power in the blood. Um, from last Sunday and the Sundays before, the time frame is about 63 uh, A.D. Um, the uh, children of God are under immense persecution within this book. Uh, it's been a hard time for Christians as they're trying to bear up under the burden of the enemy coming against them. Uh, just to sidetrack, put a note out there, I believe we're in that day and time. You try talking about Jesus on your uh, workplaces and to your friends that are around you. Sometimes we're looked at as we're crazy. But I know that God is real and he's doing a wonderful thing within this season. Uh, the saints here uh, within Second Peter, they're having to deal with the fact that uh, these pressures are bringing forth on them or coming forth on them. And they don't want to be hypocrites. Uh, Peter is warning them against hypocrisy, acting like one way when you come to the fellowship, but living a different way when you get back home. This is important to denote. Peter brings out that everything that we do is an example for Christ or an example for the devil. On the last time we were in 2 Peter 1 and 4, that scripture by which have been given to us exceedingly and great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And we talked about I am free. The big thing is we transition into this portion of scripture. Are we truly free? And if we are not free, how can we get into the freedom of Christ? Let's go ahead and jump into 2 Peter 1 and 10. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. Love and verse, for so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly in the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, this is so important to the note. Peter wants us to grow in our faith. 
I want us to be strong Christians that we don't have to just be pumped up on Sunday, but we're strong in the faith on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. That literally, thank God for wonderful songs and wonderful choirs and wonderful preachers, but we have a praise that's on the inside of us at all times that can be directly connected to the Lord. Notice here, Peter, as he writes here, he says that we need to be, or contextually, they need to be diligent to make their call and election sure. What that means is you got to know what you believe. You can't just be dependent on what mama believes or daddy believes or granddaddy believes. You've got to know the Lord for yourself. you got to. Because this world is hit and hard. It is not sparing any punches. you got to know our young people as you're uh, in your schools, you're dealing with it, our college students, uh, the professors are coming at you with evolution and all kinds of crazy stuff. you got to know within your heart what you believe and that Jesus is real. He said make sure that that election is sure, that calling is sure, because if you do this, I love this part, you will never stumble. That means no matter what the enemy throws at me, no matter what he comes, he brings my way, that I will never stumble. I will be sure-footed simply because I trust in the Lord and know that he's bigger than any situation that can come against me. For so an entrance will be supplied to you, this last part, the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Isn't it all about getting to be in his presence, to be with the Lord, to know that I I'm going to live with him forever and ever in that heavenly state to know that there's going to be no more pain, no more sickness, no more distress. But this is a training ground to be in God's presence. We find out within these scriptures and before that we need to stay in the word. We need to stay in prayer and we need to hold on to Jesus. And most importantly, to stay away from sin. As we are interacting with Christ, Christ will lead us away from sin. Now, I want you to start thinking in your life when sin is approaching you, temptation is approaching you. How many times when you call on the name of Jesus that he always makes a way of escape? There's never been a time that I called on the Lord that he didn't give me a way out. But there's been many times that I chose not to call on the Lord. This is important to know for the Christian. We must stop making excuses and say, I can live holy for God, but I can't do it within myself. It has to be in the power of the Holy Spirit. 2 Peter 1.12 explains this. For this reason, I will not be negligent to remind you always of these things, though you know and are established in the present truth. Uh, Peter determined to keep on reminding the believers over and over again the importance of the development of the character or the Christian character. He wanted to put in their mind that we can't just get commonplace. We just can't come to the point of just going to church and going to church, but we've got a desire to grow in the Lord. Some people are always talking about the deep things of God. You, you ever heard that? Uh, they went to a service. Oh, that preacher was deep. They, they said some deep stuff. But I found out, you know what? If you can't live holy on the basic day with your neighbor, you don't need no deep stuff. You can talk about deep stuff all day, but when the devil come at you, you got to know how to plead the blood of Jesus. You know how you got to know how to stand your ground. All that deep stuff, it ain't going to help you, but you got to know that you are saved and sanctified and filled with God's spirit. He said, I, I don't want you to be negligent. I, I need to remind you of these things always that you can be established in that truth. There's always the danger. Listen to me. There's always the danger of a Christian sliding into that momentary lapse of sin. There's always, it, it doesn't matter how holy you are. It doesn't matter how old you are. Sin is always crouching and it wants to overtake you. I, I, I told this story, but I was in a men's fellowship and we had someone that was 80 plus and I asked him right in front of the men. I said, do you ever get tempted? You know, I was expecting him to kind of, you know, think about it and everything before I could really get it out of my mouth. He said, oh yes. Like you 80 plus years old, what do you get tempted about? It doesn't matter. Temptation comes in various forms. Doesn't matter how old you are, but it's always there. Give you an example. Have you ever been a good service, man, praise and worship, but you got outside and somebody got on your last nerve, got a call, got a text that took you right out of the spirit and you found yourself in a different situation. We've got to be reminded at all times to keep close to the Lord. 
Hebrews 10, 24 says like this, and let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. That 25th verse, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. In that Hebrews correlation, what it's saying as we see the, the days get darker, as we see the struggle, we need each other. We need the fellowship. We need Bible studies. We need good Christians to encourage us, call us on the phone. We need intercessors in our lives because the enemy is stepping up his game. Any amens in the house? He is coming from the left, right. He's coming from behind. He's coming in front of us. He's coming below us. And I need some good Christians. I don't need nobody to play with me, but I need somebody to pray with me. Anybody, anybody understand what I'm saying? I don't need you acting like a Christian, but I need you to intercede. If I ask you to pray for me. I need you to pray for me because the enemy comes strong at us. But as we see the day approaching, we should get even more excited about the fellowship of the saints. There's power in the blood. Look at 2 Peter 1.13. Yes, I think it is right. As long as I am in this tent to stir you up by reminding you, knowing that shortly I must put off my tent just as our Lord Jesus Christ showed me. Moreover, I will be careful to ensure that you always have a reminder of these things after my decease. Now, this is important to know. Uh, Peter is really within months of, of, of dying. Uh, most theologians agree that he'll be crucified. And Peter himself said, you know what? I am not worthy to be crucified like my Lord and Savior. So what he said, I want you to turn me upside down. I want you to turn me upside down because I'm not worthy to be crucified right side up. That's how much in love with the Christ he was. And so he's saying, I'm getting closer to going to be with Jesus, but I got to drop some knowledge to you. I got to give you some information. I, I, while I'm in this tent, I want you to stir you up. I want to stir you up by reminding you who you are. We, we, we need that because the world is messing with folks' minds. So many people, they don't even know who they are. They don't know if they're male. They don't know if they're female. And they don't know if they're a dog. They don't know if they're a cat. They don't know which way they're going. Some people are married. Don't even know if they're married. Some people are single. Don't even know if they're single. People are confused within this generation. we got black folks don't know they're black. White folks don't know they're white. Hispanics trying to be black. Everything is so confused in our society. But I'm telling you one thing you can guarantee. I am saved and I'm delivered. I am set free. Why? Because I want to remind you the, the blood ball in the house, the saved folks in the house, the, house, the people who have asked God in their heart. You know what? You have an everlasting entrance into the presence of the Lord. And that is good news. I don't care what you call me, what you think that I am, but I can tell you I am a Christian. And that is good news. Stir you up by reminding you, he says, because shortly I'm going to have to put off this tent. Now, this is important to know because I know we spend a lot of time on our tents. Amen. Now, some of you, you got up really early this morning to make sure your tent was clean. Uh, you made sure that it was it was colored. You made sure that everything was there because when you came to church, you wanted everybody to, to look at your tent. But the fact remains is, is a tent is made to pass away. It's made to take down. And Peter brings this correlation. He says, it's coming a time that I'm going to have to take off this flesh or this tent and I'm going to be be with my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Moreover, I want to ensure you that you always are reminded, even after I pass away, to hold on to the power of uh, the, the fact that there is power in the blood of Christ. There's power in the blood of Lamb. And no matter what anybody says to you, you've got to hold on to the fact that Christ has everything, has done everything in your life. The wake up means in that stirring up, it means to wake up, to come to the point of realizing that no matter how much darkness comes against me, that we have authority to tell the enemy, you know what, you got to flee. You got to, no matter where I am, even though it may seem like I'm down for the last count, if Christ is on the inside of me, uh, am I talking to anybody? You can give a praise in the dark. I dare you. I dare your life feel like you fall around. You got migraine, headache. The doctor done gave you a bad diagnosis. The bills are due. You ain't got no money. Your Caught them broke down. You can't get the beat, beat, don't even work in it. I dare you to stand before the car, lift up your head, and let the whole neighborhood know you crazy for Jesus. Why? Because God is still good. There's power in the blood, 2 Peter 1 16. For we 
did not follow cunningly devised fables. When we made known to you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Yes. Now, now this is important. Peter is specifically talking about that Matthew chapter 17. He's dealing with the transfiguration. When he was on the mountain and, and Jesus actually turned whiter than snow his garments and we see the, the apostle or, or the prophets came and they spoke to him. That's what he's dealing with. Uh, John writes in, in John chapter 1 in the 14th verse, he says, and the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and true. Now this is important to note as Peter looks at this, he wants the congregation to know, the believers to know that this was not something that was a cunningly devised. Our kids have got to know this because I'm dealing with college students and, and, and these are deep professors that they're, they're speaking into their lives and they try to come up with all these uh, scientific proofs and, and carbon data and, and I'm all into that. I, I believe that science can be used for good but so many times the devil can try to come into our kids' minds and they come to us and saying that they're monkeys. I'm saying you may act like a monkey but you ain't a monkey. You need to understand that this stuff that we're dealing with is the truth. This was not made up. I've read the 66 books over and over again. I've, I've, I've tried to find loopholes to it, but I'm telling you, can't nobody do me like Jesus. I, I, I'm not talking about just an emotional experience. Please, please give me. Yes, we get emotional when we talk about Jesus. He's done so much for us, but I'm talking about he has changed my life. He's changed my mindset. I've seen miracle after miracle. I've seen deliverance after deliverance. I know that God's word is real. I I know that there's an everlasting life. I know Jesus died and got up on the third day, and I know without a shadow of doubt, he's going to have to come back, and I know that we're going to have to stand before him. Peter said, we were eyewitnesses to his majesty. John further declares in 1 John 1 and 1, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with eyes, which we have looked upon in our hands and handled concerning the word of life. That second verse, the life was manifested and we have seen it and bear witness and declare to you that eternal life, which was with the Father and was manifested to us. There's power in the blood. Peter said, I know without a shadow of doubt, I, I'm betting my whole life on this. I touched him. I, I walked with the Savior. I, I saw him walk on the water. I was there with them when he said, come on out and walk with me. I was there with the miracle signs and wonders. I showed up with, with Jesus when Lazarus was called forth after four days. They had already wrapped him up. He was in that tomb and Jesus said, roll back the stone. He called his name and I saw a dead man come back to life. 2 Peter 1.17, for he received from God the Father honor and glory. When such a voice came to him from the excellent glory, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Yes. And we heard this voice which came from heaven when we were with him on the holy man. Now, now, as, as Peter is dealing with this, this context of the transfiguration, he said, I was there. I saw the change and I, I saw, I saw the, the prophets of old come and talk to him and, and, I, and I heard it for myself. Uh, Matthew's gospel records it like this in Matthew 17, 5. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And suddenly a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. There's power in the blood. I'm telling you, if we can grasp this, though we've never seen him physically within ourselves, to know that this is real without a shadow of doubt. Peter said, I saw it for myself. I heard it for myself that the Father spoke that this is my son. This is the same Jesus that dwells in our heart via the Holy Spirit. Look at 2 Peter 1.19. And so we have the prophetic word confirmed which you do well to heed as a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Second Peter 1 20, knowing this first, that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. For prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by 
the Holy Spirit. I, I tell you, this, this is important because I, I've had to teach some high-level classes and, and people have brought evolutionary uh, theory to me. But when you get an understanding of the Bible, you can be able to talk to folks and you can bring them to the point. But I love this part. Uh, Peter just deals with it from a fact of being changed internally and having an encounter with the Lord. He says, I want you to know that God has done something. He's brought forth this prophecy of Scripture and is not of any private interpretation. He's saying that this is not singled out on one person, but you've got these 66 books. It's been prophesied from the Old Testament that the Messiah would come. And then you've got these apostles that were willing to die for their faith. All this comes together. He said, for the prophecy never came by the will of man. But I, I love this. But holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. That means that all the, 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 the scripture that we have, how God spoke. Spoke it through men. He used men to write this down. He controlled their hand to make sure that we had an accurate account of what God did within the midst of the earth. He, had, he gave us an accurate account that we can look back at the prophecies to make sure that they were fulfilled through the Messiah, King of Kings. And he also gave us an accurate account of the things that are to come. Yeah. How many times have we read the scriptures and, and we said, you know what, that can never happen. But now we're in a day and time that we're looking around and we're saying, oh, my God, it's happening. The scriptures are true. The scriptures are being fulfilled second by second, minute by minute. D.T. Young, a uh, noted theologian, he writes, he says, so the text rightly understood asserts that scripture is not human in its ultimate or origin. It is God's interpretation, not man's. We often hear certain statements of scripture as representing David's opinion or Paul's opinion or Peter's opinion. Yet, strictly speaking, we have no man's opinion in those holy writings. It is all God's interpretation of things. No prophecy of the scripture represents an individual's interpretation. Men spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Man, I was talking to someone the other day and they were going through Paul's writing and they, they said, you know what, that was Paul's opinion. That's what Paul thought. I said, well, the problem is he wrote three-fourths of the New Testament. You're going to have to deal with Paul a lot. And so the fact is, I have to decide within my heart, and I've come to the point that God's word is true because he just used feeble vessels to get us the true word. 1 Corinthians 2.13 says, These things which we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual what we have today as we go through the scriptures line upon line, precept upon precept is truly power. There's power in the blood. Have you ever been in a situation in your life and you began to read the word of God and it was just what you needed in a nick of time? I tell you, there's power in the blood of Christ. When I think about how many scriptures are within the Bible and that I can hold on to them and they have truly changed my life through the via the Holy Spirit, I tell you, that is good news. There is no book like this. I've read a lot of books in my life. Being an English major, education, I've had to go through a lot of books, but I'm telling you, after I got through those books, there wasn't no need of reading them anymore because they couldn't really change my life. But when I got into the Word of God, when I felt the power of God infused into those words, my whole life changed. Where there's truly power in what God has done for us. That's why Jesus was beaten and bled for us. He was hung on that old rugged cross called Calvary, nails in his hands and nails in his feet. And, and Jesus gives up the ghost and he dies for you and me. There's power in the blood of the Lamb. John 19, 33 says it like this, but when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. John 19, 34, but one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear and immediately blood and water came out. There's power in the blood. Uh, Peter is thinking back to all of this. Even though Peter denied him three times, he was still kind of looking through the crowd. And he said, even after my Savior died, that they, they weren't gonna, they were gonna break his legs, but he was already dead. They took that spear and out came blood and water. Uh, most historians believe that what that spear did, it went up into his heart and it pierced the pericardium and out came blood and water. But what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. 
And he was seen as testified in 1935. It said, and his testimony is true, and he knows that he is telling the truth so that you may believe. Yes, we have a, an understanding today that the Christ did die. Yes, that he hung on the cross of Calvary, but I want you to know on that third day, he got up with all power and all glory. I'm telling you, this is not a lie. This is not a fable like Peter said, but we can know that we have a Savior that's more than enough. I don't care what you're going through in your life right now. I want you to know that God is faithful. I don't care if you've been diagnosed with a disease that you can't be healed of. I want you to know that God is still working it out. I don't care if your kid is acting crazy. I want you to know that you can still call on the name of the Lord and he can work miracles in your life. Are there any amens in the life, in the house? I, I don't care what you're doing on your job. And if you feel like you're going to get a pink slip or you feel like your bills can't be made, I want you to know that there's power in the blood of the Lamb. You need to know that no matter what comes your way, no matter what the situation, that you can have a praise on the inside and know that God has never failed you. Are there a few people in the house today that can say, you know what, there's been some ups and downs in my life and I felt like I was all alone, but when I look back at the past, I found out that God has always been faithful. It was me that almost lost my mind, but I learned how to call on the name of the Lord. Are there any folks in the house as we pull this all together that have learned to call on the name of the Lord? Anybody know that he's sweet? I know. Anybody know that he's a way maker? Anybody ever found out he's a doctor in a sick room? Anybody ever found that in a court case he can be your best lawyer? I'm telling you there's something about the blood of Jesus. Well, Louis E. Jones in 1899 right? would you be free from the burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you over evil a victory to win? There's wonderful power in the blood. Well, if I can stop right now, there's power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There's power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. We're in a series of, 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 of we got all these superheroes. We got Wonder Woman doing her stuff. And we got other superheroes, Spider-Man doing this stuff. But I want the young folks to know there's only one really superhero. His name was Jesus, the Christ, the anointed one. Died and got up with all power and all glory. And he's still changing lives. There's power in the blood when you come to your feet. Second Peter 1.16 For we did not follow cunningly devised fables when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ but were our witnesses of his majesty. This is real what we have. If there are any doubts that ever come to you, ask somebody who knows them for themselves. Ask somebody who's not ashamed. Go to grandma who's been saved and delivered and she may not be able to give you all the scientific proof, but she can tell you, baby, I've been changed. He came into my life, he delivered me, he set me free, and he's always been a provider. Go to your mom and dad if they're a true believer, and they can tell you, I may not be able to walk through all this, but I can tell you he's sweet. I know. And I've got blessed assurance that he's coming back again. No other religion can do that for you. Science leads to a dead end without Christ. But I'm so glad to know there's power in the blood. As our deacons come forth and our intercessors, our ministers that are here, we ask you to gather around the altar. This is a time of examination before we go into our communion. Do you truly believe? The enemy has a way of kind of twisting truth, putting stuff in. Sometimes he'll bring doubt to our young people, our middle age and our old. But if you're here today, I want you to know our God is so faithful. Say, Pastor, what I can what can I do to make sure that I know that I know that I know? Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, and the scriptures are clear. You will be saved. 
You may say, Pastor, how do you know that's real? Because I did the same thing. And I've been changed, changed, changed. Growing closer to him on a daily basis. Not sinless, but sanctified. Knowing how to repent, 1 John 1 and 9. He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. That's good news. So when we run in those situations that we slide, we say, God, please forgive me. And he is faithful. If you're here today, you're ready to accept Jesus. Actually, he's, he's already made you ready. We ask you to come forth today. You come forth as an open confession. It's by grace through faith that you're saved, not of yourself. It's a gift of God. Why are you thinking about that? Second invitation, maybe you're looking for a church home. Christian experience, oh, by letter. We invite you to the altar today. Not a perfect church, but we can tell you and show you someone who is perfect, the Christ. He's teaching us, showing us how to love one another as we see the day approaching. If you're here, we invite you to the altar. Then that final invitation. Just prayer request. This world is getting darker. There's so many struggles within our lives. Coming to this altar does something. Seeking the Lord's face. Asking him to strengthen us. Interceding for our young people. Interceding for moms and dads. I'm telling you, it does something. He sustains us. So if you're here today, you just stand in need of prayer. Some may want to touch a prayer warrior and say, would you pray for me? Others just may want to come and just get around the altar. Just hold hands. Some may want to get on their knees and say, God, here I am. I know there's power in the blood. Would you come for me? Would you come for me? It's me, Lord. It's me. It's me, Lord. As Minister Lucas comes forth and prepares himself for our altar prayer, I want to give you a little bit more time. God, it's me. It's me. It's me. It's me. If you feel them pulling on your heart, would you come? Would you come? Oh, God is faithful. Oh, he's faithful. Oh, he's faithful. Give you a few more moments. He's sweet, I know. There's power in the blood of the Lamb. heavenly and all wise God, the giver and the sustainer of our very existence. I am indeed grateful for having the ability to listen to this sermon. There is power in the land. For we do understand as blood runs through our veins, it purifies the infinities that are there. And the same blood that Jesus died on the cross of Calvary was shed for the remissions of our sins. us to be able to stand tall like men and women without any fear to testify to anyone anywhere at any given time about what you have done for a sinner like us. Inspire us to be able to stand right own righteousness and discard those things which are wrong that may seem right to others. But whatever you have us to do, motivate us to do it willingly and protect us from all hurt, harm, and danger through your mighty Holy Spirit. Realizing that we must be able to walk by faith and not by sight. We realize too, O oh God, that the adversary, the devil, Lucifer, would put obstacles in our way to discourage us 
for standing there up on your holy and righteous name. But the power that God has given us through his son Jesus Christ, we can walk over our troubles and reach protection on the other side of the river. We pray, oh God, for those who are sick, shut in, and incarcerated. Those who are in destitute situations, help them not to be able to give in to their circumstances, but to be able to stand on the promises of your divineness. Through the Bible, through the word which we have read and will continue to read. Fortify us on every side. And help us to love one another in spite of our differences. And lastly, oh God, we pray for the leaders on the international, national, state, and local levels of government. The pastors, the preachers, and the evangelists and the laity of this your church. Grant us and keep us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. As you take your seats, I think we prepare for our communion time. If you have any aunt that's within your heart holding anything against a brother or sister, I, I encourage you right now before you take this communion to confess that. Say, God, forgive me. And if possible, if possible, that person is here, get it right with them right now before you take this communion. Because this communion, there's power in the blood of the Lamb. He's left us this ordinance that we could be reminded of what He's done for us. As we go in this communion today, there's not a lot that we can be certain about except what Christ has told us, except for the Word of God has told us. The world is challenging us with so many different things. Uh, I remember... Uh, some months, actually it was a couple of years ago, I got interested, you know, I, I grew up and I was always known as black, you know, you have kinky hair, you're black, 1% you're black, that's what Jim Crow told us, so I did that DNA test, and that, I, I was just, I didn't want to know if I really came from Africa or anything like that, I found out I'm a mutt, that's what I am, I got so much mix on the inside of me, and they needed to talk to my mom and daddy, and say, what's up with this, you know, um, but one thing I can tell you, God's word is real. He is, my mama doing something back there. God's word is real. God is true. Jesus is real. He is our savior and he's coming back for his church. Father, thank you so much for this communion. Thank you for all that you've done for us. We ask you to bless the bread and bless the juice. In Jesus name, amen.